look, I'm sure some of the astute people in the room figured out that we were in the playoffs prior to the kickoff. But, but I love the fact, I absolutely love the fact that the guys persevered, powered through, won a game, closed out a game, kept the lead under some duress, and we actually punched our own ticket into the playoffs. And I'm extremely proud of this franchise, this, this, the players in there. It's a pretty big moment. I think we've made the playoffs 15 out of 16 years. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good accomplishment. You know, a lot of people would have written us off earlier in the year. I know you guys didn't, but uh, a lot of people would. I also, I also, also have the green light to make even a bigger announcement, okay? So I know you guys all heard about the Club World Cup. It's been reported on very well. Uh, but tonight I can confirm that we, that Seattle is going to be the host city for all three of our group games. And when I talk about group games, Maz, I'm talking about Chelsea, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, Palmeiras, Boca Juniors. It could be any one of those teams. And that is a massive, massive opportunity, occasion. It's a once in a lifetime event for the city of Seattle. Maybe once in a lifetime, maybe it'll happen again long after I'm gone. But look, as a fan, I'd, I'd be there. I mean, I, 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 I know I would be there. Uh, I think this is, again, just an incredible, incredible event. I know our office people will, you know, do a great job on the production. So I'm hoping that everybody can, you know, buy a ticket for us playing against, you know, some of the best teams in the world. I would, I would love to see everybody there in the stadium and get it filled, uh, you know, 60,000. It's, it's a once in a lifetime deal. It's pretty, it's pretty massive. All right, with that, we'll start with questions in the room. Mike has come around. Jada, I saw you first. Thank you. Uh, congratulations on the win, Brian. Did you guys know? Did you tell the team or anything no. else? That no, I didn't tell the team. <laughs> no. Then um, was it hard to keep from them, or what was like the, the pre well, they were last playing. message? They were playing. I didn't say anything as they walked out. I told them they need to play up to their standard and all the normal things that I say. But, you know, the team played well tonight. Houston's a good club. It's a good team. They're missing a couple of guys, but we persevered. We scored a timely goal. You know, I keep telling you, when you score those goals is important because they had started off the game fairly well. And then once we scored the goal, I thought we grew into the game. And there was a lot of really good attacking moments in that, in that first half that we could have maybe gone to 2 nothing and had a little more control. One of the things, though, that you've struggled with is closing out, and it seemed like your not only your um, substitutions seemed to work out in your favor and, and were, uh, you know, timely or at the right time Mix. to get some fresh <laughs> legs. And I wanted to see if you could talk a little bit about the the way that you guys were able to at least close this one out. Unlike well, others. Well, look, the subs that came on, Reed did a good job. Josh, uh, you know, uh, Georgie. It's 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 always it's always you know. When you make a decision, the subs come on, it's going to go one of two ways. And tonight, I think the guys really bared down. I think that they really, you know, defended well. I would have loved again to score that second goal. I mean, we had some opportunities when the game opened up in the second half. But I thought, you know, maybe we we're a little too rushed. We could have extended our possessions a little bit more in the second half. But certainly, there were some exciting moments in the game, and I hope the fans that were here tonight had a good time. All right, Miles, Miles over to you. Sure. Just going on the goal, I mean, it was, I, I, I certainly there was a team goal, because you had a high press, and then there was a turnover, and yeah. it was off the throw in, and then the ball goes to Obit, to Jordan, to Resnick, who's on the front foot, and that guy that just cannot stop scoring. Opportunist, <laughs> opportunistic goal. Uh, another stat that these guys gave me is Paul has scored in every game that he's played against Houston. I mean, that's pretty amazing. I mean, uh, but yeah, so we weren't able to get good pressure early in the match, but then we switched a couple of things. You know, Albert was staying with their number six. 
uh, we pressed with a little more intensity, and you're right, Maz, that's how we got the goal. Jeremiah? Yeah, as much as you wanted to get that second goal, and I'm sure it would have been good for your, your blood pressure and your stress <laughs> levels, uh, is it in some ways maybe just as important to show yourselves that you could close out a game like this? Uh, obviously, with last game we talked about how the struggles in, in closing out this exact type of situation. Well, I think the guys concentrated for that 93 minutes of the game and whatever extra time at halftime. I mean, that's the, that's the focus you need to have in critical games down the stretch, in the playoffs. You can't take one play off. You know, against San Jose, we, you know, we took one play off and it wasn't, wasn't good timing. Tonight they, they focused and everybody was, you know, compact and we made it difficult on Houston. All right, we'll keep working around this side of the room. We'll go to Diego next. While we do that, for those on Zoom, if you have a question, please go ahead and hit that raised hand function button. Buenas noches. Eh, felicitaciones por el triunfo y por Thank la you. clasificación. Eh, en lo que resta del, del, de los partidos, en los partidos que restan, considerando que ya se clasificó y se logró los objetivos, eh, ¿piensa probar nuevos jugadores, eh, un nuevo esquema quizás, en lo que resta del, de los, en los partidos que restan? Gracias. Um, coach, congratulations on the win and the clasificación to the playoffs. Uh, the question is that on the games that we have left, uh, since the classification has already been achieved, do you plan on trying new players or new no. schemes or strategies? We're going we're gonna to play our best team against Vancouver, and then we're going to play our best team against Colorado. There's no more experimenting. Eh, no, vamos a usar nuestro mejor equipo contra Vancouver, vamos a utilizar nuestro mejor equipo contra Colorado. No hay ningún tipo de experimentación que podamos hacer a esta altura. What I would add to that, what I would add to that is there will be some changes because it's a three-game week. But for all intents and purposes, we need to get some consistency and you know make sure that the 11 players that I believe are the best that they continue to grow together as a group. Eh, para agregar simplemente que debido a que tenemos tres partidos en una semana. Seguramente haría algunos cambios de jugadores, pero no desde el punto de vista de estrategia, más simplemente para poder seguir rotando, poner al mejor equipo que tengamos disponible en ese momento uh, en los siguientes partidos y mantener a los 11 jugadores que considero que son los mejores en el mejor ritmo de juego entre ellos. All right, we'll come around to this side of the room. Nico, I saw you. Mike is on its way. Reminder on Zoom, please hit the raise hand function button if you have a question. Nico, go ahead. <clears throat> Coach, congrats on the win. Just wanted to build off of the changes for the last few games of the regular season. Uh, with Pedro de la Vega also came off in the second half. Uh, will he be, do you expect him for this, around the same time limit for the remainder of the season for this three game week or do you intend to increase his time on the pitch? We're going to try and increase his time on the pitch, but performance is also another factor. And so tonight, I just think we needed some fresh legs. He's building fitness. I thought he had a decent performance. So we're trying to build on that. But you know, when I see there's tactical or you know, fitness issues, then we're going to make changes. Thank you. Yep, we'll go right here. Coach, what did you think about uh, Reed's play uh, during his time on the field, especially uh, you know, as a winger and not as a back? Good, fine. He's a tremendous young talent. Uh, you know, decision making, some of that stuff, he'll get better at when he has more seasoning, but good kid. Okay, Felipe Makeda, I see your hand raised. Please go ahead and ask your question on Zoom. Thank you, Alex. Coach Brian, uh, congratulations. My question to you is, um, do you feel any relief now that you have the uh, the, the you you already have a spot in the uh, post uh, season? And also, if you can tell me, if it is how important it is for you to keep uh, having uh, points in in 
in the rest of the the the, uh, the games. Look, there's still a chance. Do I feel relieved? Yes, relieved. It's one game. We're gonna have to be stressed out again against Vancouver and Colorado, and then the last game against our rivals. Uh, all games that are going to be very entertaining. I hope people watch TV. I hope people come watch us against Portland. Uh, we're going to try and get as many points as we can, Felipe. I think we've had good results up in Vancouver. We had good results in Colum uh, Colorado. And certainly the last home game could push us into a top four seating. That's our goal. All right, we'll come back around to this side. Jeremiah, I think you're next. Yeah, I realize we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, way ahead of ourselves maybe, but with the Club World Cup coming up, how do you think that that changes, or knowing that you have games here, uh, does that change anything as far as how you maybe go into the off season and sort of planning? Look, the club has always had an off season plan. I know Craig and Adrian have been working on it. Um, regardless of who the players are, Everybody's going to be excited. I can't, I can't, you know, it's going to take a little while for me to reflect uh, on the opportunity that we have. Again, you're playing against some of the absolute top teams in the world. And Seattle Sounders, we are in that tournament. And people need to come to the games. I mean, this is, this is, I can't overstate it enough. So the players, that, a lot of those guys in that room will still be here. There will be some new guys, Jeremiah, but whoever is the makeup of the team, we're gonna go out there and do our best to be competitive. Reminder, this isn't just friendlies and exhibitions, this is an actual tournament. We're the only tournament that's won, we're the only MLS team that's won Champions League. So we have a, we have a high bar and we want to do well. All right, Maz, over to you again. Yeah, Ryan, just going back, um, can you just talk about your players' awareness and decision-making in reference to say they grew into the game and that they, they knew when to kind of maybe not go forward as much, but really make that pass and not put not put themselves in danger as much, even though you were home. Control. Look, this game, this game was going to be tricky because Houston likes possession. You know, we're a pretty good transition team. You know, some of our early moments when we tried to play the ball long over the top, play a little bit more direct, it didn't work out. And so there was that spell where we established some possession, made them chase a little bit. It worked. Second half, we were a little bit more direct, a little bit more transitional. So that's just the way the game played out. Miles, looks like you have one more. We'll, we'll allow it. Yeah, yeah sorry, Brian. I, the, the, that play, um, what was it, 37th minute, you played out of the back, you did multiple passes. Can you talk about that? Well, I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to watch the film. Okay. I'll have to watch the film. Talk to you I'm too excited about the. Club World Cup. My mind is a blank. I, I mean, I want to compete against Real Madrid. No, I'm, I'm just joking. We're going we're gonna to compete this year, and next year is just a, a bonus. But it's an exciting time. It's an exciting time for soccer in this country. You know, the women's game, the men's game, the World Cup, the Club World Cup. I mean, it's, it's such an exciting, exciting time for this organization. I'm proud to be part of it. All right, we'll take one or two more. Jeremiah, see ya. I know this is, this is Moz's bit, but I want to ask you a tactical question anyway. Uh, you know, they... Careful. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a stat. <laughs> it's not a stat. Uh, it, it does seem like in the last, I don't know, uh, few months, you, you have made some tactical tweaks to the way you, uh, the way you attack, and it does seem tied to uh, Paul's ability to sort of keep a high line on, on that side, and it doesn't seem to require Alex to be getting so far up the line. I guess if you could just speak to that, uh, 
that you're, change you're, in tactics that you you see. You're going to give our opponents our tactics yeah. since you asked. <laughs> Look, the 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 challenge we know how we want to play. But the challenge is always how do you put the players in the best spots that suits their ability? And so De La Vega is not a true winger. He likes to come inside, you know, and Alex gets up the line. But Alex, that's a long run for Alex, and it's, it, and it's too much sometimes. So you need to have a little bit of creativity on the right-hand side, guys moving, interchanging. I'm, I'm okay with all that. On the left-hand side, it's a little bit more uh, deliberate, I would say. And Paul has done a great job of understanding when he needs to run in behind, staying wide, creating the width on that side because he knew who's part of the 3-2 build. And he's smart enough to understand and execute those tactics. And that's kudos to him.